Also, just remember that rules over time can change with regards to the capacity, what you can do with losses, carry them back, carry them forward, uh, and so on and so forth. So just remember when you're looking at uh, losses, you want to make sure to kind of double check. Double check the law. Uh, where you stand with regards to the type of loss and what your ca capacity to do with the loss is. And again, the tax software is often a useful guide to help you with that. All right, let's do the gambling. So gambling is another common one because people might get like a form uh, 1099G uh, or I, I'm sorry, w a W2G, a W2G. Uh, and that might come from a casino or a horse track or whatever like that. If they're gamblers and they gamble a lot, then they're probably kind of have an idea of how the gambling winnings winning are going to work. If you get a documentation for it, like anything else, you're going to have to report at least that amount on the tax return or you're likely to, to run into a problem with it. Now, can you deduct the losses? Uh, not often, because if you could deduct the losses, you'd have to deduct them on a Schedule A and only some people are going to be able to uh, to categorize for the Schedule A because they're going to be taking the uh, standard deduction. So, so, and the losses are typically just limited to the amount of income that you received as well. So there's a severe limitation in the amount of losses that uh, you might be able to take. Now, if you could claim that you're a professional gambler or something, and if it's a legal activity, then maybe you could do the Schedule C and then have losses, but obviously that's not typically the case. And then you might have some clients that that just get a win, they just go to Vegas and they win a car or something, you know, they, they win a significant amount of money at one time. That could be a shock to some people because it could have a significant impact on their taxes. So, so when you do that, we're gonna say, okay, gambling, gambling income, possibly on a W-2. So let's say this is a, a W-2, uh, a W-2G. So let's say W-2G. And then I'm gonna say that we had uh, winnings of, let's say, let's say it was significant, like 30, Thousand, right and then I'm gonna go back on over and so now we've got the winnings of course that are gonna be populated here and that's gonna be significant going on to the 1040 now just something to kind of be aware of so obviously we're populated here on the 1040 and so our income is going up and then our taxable income is going up I won't do it on the tax software because I think it's a fairly straightforward for our formula because I think it's fairly straightforward right here. And I wanna do a couple more of these, but let me just do an example. If I was to remove that, and then I was to say that the, the wages income was, let's say they were earning 40,000 and they, they withheld 5,000. Now you've got 40,000, uh, 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 12, 12,950 gets us only 20, 27,050 of income. The tax is at 3,044. If I look at my, my tax summary, then I'm at a, a highest tax bracket of 12% average 11.3. Now, if I had a significant amount of gambling earnings, then of that 30,000, that's going to come as quite a shock. You know, someone in that situation might win a car or something or whatever, and they're going to go and they're, or they get a lot of money and they're just going to spend it possibly. But the tax bill is going to be painful because that's a huge increase, which is going to have an impact on their, on their, uh, their, their highest bracket. So now their highest bracket is at 22%. So that's going to be a significant increase. So when these, if you get a big windfall, profit for whatever reason, like you won the lottery or you won a prize or you went to Vegas and won a car or something like that. If you're going to receive that at one time, this is what needs to be taken into consideration. And if you run into that classic kind of scenario of, would you have it rather have an annuity of payments, a series of payments over the next so many years or a lump sum today, then the lump sum, when you do that figure in that calculation, it's better to have money today than the annuity if the payments were equal but there's also a big tax implication on it as well, because if you take the money today, then you're gonna be paying possibly higher rates because it's gonna push you possibly into higher tax brackets. So it's just something else to kind of consider, you know, if you have someone that runs into that kind of situation. Also, if they got a windfall amount or they got winnings, they might withhold from it. Something that most people don't do, but you know, it would be smart. I mean, you might do that obviously because 
Now, if, if there's a significant increase to your to your taxes, then you might have to withhold and you might have to withhold more than even your marginal tax bracket before in order to, to be okay, because now you're gonna be taxed at your highest tax bracket, which now in this case got pushed up to 22%. So in the form 1040, page two, then we'd have our withholdings here from the from the W-2s and then other withholdings, uh, the other 5,000 was withheld here. Then we got the cancellation of debt. Now this one's often a shocker for people as well, because because what it, if you get cancel of debt, you didn't actually receive money, so people often don't see it as income. But obviously, if someone if you owed someone money legally, and they and you and then they said you don't have to pay me, that's kind of like they gave you money and then you gave it back to them, right? They canceled debt, so that would be an income. So unless there's a rule that says the government, it's kind of like the government, it's the same standard rule for income, unless there's an except, exception, which there often could be, because most of the time when debt cancellation happens, it's going to be, it's going to be because people are insolvent, incapable of paying the debt, then you would have to include it in income. So what you'd want to do is have uh, a, a the, the 1099C is what you would receive. You're not going to see that all the time, but if you see it, you say, okay, it's a 1099. So I would think I would have to include that, which would include it in our income line on schedule uh, schedule one. And if I have to include it, it would pull over to the form 1040. And then it would pull in here and now our income has gone up and so on and so forth. Now, next we have the foreign earned income exclusion from form 2555. And again, that's more of a kind of specialty area. So if you have people, like I say, if you're a professional tax preparer, you might specialize in people that are in the same state. And that might be some cheaper in some ways as well to do the tax preparation and get software for it. Or people that are in multiple states or possibly people that have are, have income from multiple countries. Obviously, when you have different taxes from uh, different areas, there could be there could be a possibility for double taxation and the United States could have agreements with other uh, other governments in order to to not have a situation of double taxation and whatnot. And then you can dive into basically the detail on that possibly by going to the form 2555, which is right here. And then you can look at the instructions on the irs.gov if you want to dive into this in more detail and and dive into that in more detail as well so i won't go into a lot of detail on the on the example here but we might maybe we'll go into it more in a future presentation but let's go back to the schedule one